All right. Good morning. How's everybody doing on this Sunday? All right. Oh, let me turn the music off or the sound off on my computer so I don't hear the echo. All right. So this is Paint with Lovejoy. And today we are painting a uh, Cocker Spaniel dog. And it was a viewer request. And a little bit of what you're looking at on the screen. We've got our color choices for today. Um, it's going to be a tan uh, Cocker Spaniel with a teal background. And you are welcome to switch up any of the colors that you want for today. Um, and then what we have here, I'm on an 8x10 canvas panel. Some of you may be painting on a stretched canvas that's going to have a little bit more width on the side. And then I have my composition already on here. So you've got two options for getting the image on your canvas. First option, pause the video, draw what you see, and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Or in the description box below, there is a link to what I call a traceable. And with, you can purchase it, download it, print it out, and then with carbon paper, you transfer it to your surface. And it's a nice way, a uh, nice tool for my first time in beginner painters to get your composition on your canvas, not stress about drawing, and then you can jump right into painting. So whichever one that you go for, um, pick up the video for the painting portion, um, but do what you need to to get your composition on here. A bit of a note, generally when you transfer with carbon paper, it's going to be a bit more like this line, a little bit lighter. I went over mine with Sharpie marker just for those of you at home um, that are going to draw what you see so that way it makes it a little bit easier. So those of you doing the carbon transfer at home, don't feel like you have to go over uh, with the Sharpie marker unless you want to. Um, it'll be easier to cover with paint the carbon compared to the Sharpie marker. So just a few options. Um, all right, and I see quite a few people jumping on the chat. Excellent. So let's see, who do we have here? Um, Denise and V and Miss Smith, who I always mispronounce your first name, and Tammy and Laura Nall. Hopefully I said that right. Uh, just make a huge disclaimer that I am dyslexic, so when I read stuff uh, phonetically and how it's actually pronounced, I will find a way to mess it up, so I apologize. But I do appreciate everybody that um, joins for the live videos and anybody that's catching this on the replay. Um, just glad that you guys are painting at home. All right, so we are going to start with our background color. And because I'm on a small canvas, I am using a smaller brush. But feel free if you need to jump up to bigger brushes or smaller brushes. Um, adjust what you need to for your painting. So to make our light teal, we started with the white and then I slowly added a little bit of pigment in there. And you can go lighter or darker than what I'm using. We are gonna kind of cover this from the edges of the lines to the edge of the canvas. And then I'll talk about a wet on wet blending method um, to kind of change the shade. So if you've never painted before, try a few different brush strokes. Try the full width of your brush. You can turn it sideways, a little bit of a skinnier line. And then an all-time favorite is literally slapping your brush on the canvas. So whichever one works for you or whichever one feels good, uh, stick with that as you fill in the space. And if you have to mix your color a second or third time like I just did right here, don't stress about it being the exact same shade. And I am using student grade paint. This channel is geared towards first time and beginner painters, so I encourage that you purchase um, student grade paint and you know utilize the materials you have at home or that are affordable and then as you get more and more comfortable with painting then step up and try some of the more expensive artist grade paint um, and then dive a little bit more into your creative outlets but if you are like me and you're using student grade paint you will notice that it is a bit on the transparent side so I'm applying mine fairly thick and that gives a bit of an opaque coverage um, you can also apply one layer, let it dry, and then apply another layer. So in the painting world and really in the art world, you are constantly adapting and adjusting to the variables in front of you. And your variables can be your tools, your environment that you're painting in, um, how you feel. Our emotions are a big part of um, how we're painting. And... Um, there might even be a few other elements thrown in there, who knows. But you're constantly adapting and adjusting. So take yourself for where you're painting today, embrace it, and then tomorrow you may paint a little bit differently. Nothing's wrong with that. All right, so again, as I've been talking, just kind of filling in that space. 
those of you on the stretched canvas, I recommend carrying this color around the side and making your color. And it's much easier to do that while you have the color made compared to trying to color match at the end of class if you forget. All right. And awesome, we got Photography Queen and jumping on, excellent, excellent. So it seems like the weekends are actually a good time uh, for more people to be able to make this. So due to a lot of the technical issues um, and that my work is kind of picking up again, I did stop the daily demos and we're just doing it on the weekend. So again, I appreciate you guys taking the time to um, hang out with me on the weekends. All right, so for wet on wet blending, you have to do this while your background is wet. And what I'm doing is I'm grabbing some of the darker teal. Um, I always like the darker uh, color to be on the bottom and then we'll go a little bit lighter on the top. But all I'm doing is slapping that dark color on there. I'm gonna wipe off excess paint from my brush. And then with light pressure, you're just gonna go back in and kind of blend the two. And you will notice that your um, background color and the new color you introduce mix and kind of change. So just kind of play and have fun with that. If you, the more you move your brush, the more the two kind of blend together. So if you end up blending too much and losing that effect, just go back, reapply that color and move your brush uh, a little less than the time prior. But this is the really therapeutic uh, aspect of painting. So just kind of have fun. And if you feel like finger painting, Go right ahead. And then if you want a spot that's lighter, right here I'm grabbing some white and being rather generous with the lighter color because you'll notice that it blends very quickly and diffuses um, into the base color compared to the darker pigment that a little bit of pigment will go a long way. And the more that you paint, um, the more that will kind of become second nature and you'll understand a bit more of the color mixing. Right now for my beginner painters, um, you're stepping out of your comfort zone, you're trying something new, you're painting at home. Um, I applaud your efforts and I'm here to help. Um, but you're learning a lot in the beginning, so be kind to yourself uh, while you're painting. All right, so that's looking pretty good. All right, so we're going to be moving into painting our dog and we are going to start with our dark colors first. So we are actually going to do some black and dark gray for the nose. We've got a little bit of eyeliner. And then we're going to start moving into our shades of brown and then the tongue. So I'm just going to leave that in there. I am going to use a pointy brush for this first step. Actually, let me use the bigger of the two pointy brushes. All right. And as we go along doing this, all I want you to do is just kind of uh, observe the place where I put each of these colors and mimic that to the best of your ability at home. The more that you paint, the easier it gets. Um, and again, you're taking in so much information right now, so be nice to yourself. So we are using the black paint just directly by itself. And I went to the nose and just kind of where that line was, um, this is the front of the nose, we'll put a dark gray on the top of the nose. And as we've got this, um, let's get a little bit more intensify that eyeliner because the Cocker Spaniels and a couple other breeds of dogs do have that beautiful eyeliner. And as you can see, I am kind of putting my pinky out to steady my hand and just using the tip of the brush. And if you're doing this and you're finding that your brush is kind of shaky, that means you're holding your breath. So exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas. And basically we're kind of just giving top eyeliner here. We're gonna come in with dark gray next. So just give your, um, your dog top eyeliner. And as you saw, I was kind of doing little dots to connect, or if you can just do the full curve, whichever one works for you. All right, so keeping that black that's on my brush, I'm gonna make a new pile, and then we're gonna add some white to it. And not a whole lot, because we are staying dark gray, maybe a little bit more, but you do wanna see at least two steps down from the black. There we go, now we're starting to get a little closer. And that's about the dark gray that I'm looking for. So there is a distinct, um, almost two levels down from the black to the dark gray. All right, and then again, we're gonna fill in that top of that nose. All right, and then we're gonna do bottom eyeliner with this. And if you're noticing that your brush is starting to get a lot of paint buildup and you um, are making wider and wider lines, 
take a look at see if there's any excess paint. You can wipe it off. You could even clean the brush and that helps bring the bristles back together. So just a little bit of brush maintenance. And especially as we kind of go to do the bottom eyeliner with this, um, and I realize I'm asking you to make some small lines right now in the beginning. Um, we'll be making some longer brush strokes, bigger brush strokes next. So now we have that really pretty smoky eyeliner on our dog. So go ahead, you're gonna clean the brush. And actually I'm gonna move back up to the middle flat brush, clean all that teal out. And oh, I forgot to mention, if you guys do have any questions today, please feel free to leave them in the chat. I try to look over at the chat um, every five minutes or so to see if there's any questions. Um, so let me know what you want. All right, so for our first one, we're gonna actually start with our burnt sienna. This is more of our reddish brown. This is our raw sienna. Um, and we're actually just gonna start with this color with a little bit of black. So I'm gonna pull some of this aside. We still wanna stay in that brown range, but just add a touch of black to it to make it a little bit darker. And again, you can even see the difference to where it's darker from here compared to the color we were pulling it from. All right, and again, the student grade paint, these two particular colors are on the bit more of the transparent side. So I'm gonna apply my paint a little bit thicker. There we go. All right, so with this um, medium flat brush, I'm gonna be holding it kind of sideways. So that way I'm using a bit more of the skinny uh, portion of the brush. If that's too much for you, feel free to move down to the small pointy brush and you can do the exact same brush strokes that we're doing here. And we're gonna be starting with these dark spaces first and our darkest space would be the, where the ears are kind of um, resting against the face. And again, as you're painting, I want you to just observe the placement I put each of, each of these colors and the general shape that I make with these and mimic that to the best of your ability. A big portion of art is the power of observation. And the more you learn to observe in art, the more you'll actually carry that skill over into your everyday life and in your professional career, in your business world, um, even with raising kids and families, the more observant you are, um, just the better a better employee you can be, better parent, better person, and people appreciate it when you observe um, things that they change about themselves. So a lot of the things that you learn in art can overlap into the real world and have a lot of benefit. And that's why I encourage a lot of people to get into painting or some creative outlet um, to balance out your world it's not really about being the world's best artist or the most famous but it's about finding your escape from the rest of the world for a few hours give your brain a break before you go back to um, the world that you live in the world that you make money in the world that you take care of people so give yourself a break and get creative and you'll see the benefits show up in other areas all right i think that's enough for my um public service announcement of getting creative. <laughs> I did tell all my students, many of them that have, you know, obviously painted for the first time, that this is a very healthy addiction to have. So fuel your healthy addictions in this world. All right, so I think we're pretty good. Oh, let's get a little bit, and I'm gonna move down to the pointy brush for this one. I'm gonna pull some of that excess paint off of my brush here since I didn't have enough made. And just a little bit kind of on the corners of the eye next to that eyeliner that we were putting. There we go, all right. So we'll put that aside for later. Now we're gonna move right into our burnt sienna. And again, I'm on that pointy brush and let's see, every two or three brush strokes, I am grabbing more paint just because I am applying it thicker. And I am keeping these kind of, um, treating my brush kind of like a pencil and using just the last two millimeters of the brush. I am overlapping some of the color we just put on there. And there is a slight little curve that's coming um, from my brush and overlapping these marks. Because if you think about the Cocker Spaniel dogs, they have just those great curly um, ears or little spiral curls on their ears. Um, and those are little hairs overlapping each other. 
So as we do this, imagine each brush stroke is a strand of hair. So you're kind of moving your brush in that direction. And we're putting all of our dark spaces in first, and then we're gonna overlap with some of the lighter and go a little bit lighter. And then we'll come back in and do a few more of the dark spaces just to pop our contrast. And in some of my other videos, I recommend that you take progress photos um, while you paint and while you change your white surface. So I still recommend doing that. I just forget to mention that as often in the demos. All right. And oh, let's get a little bit here on his back. And this one, he's got a bit more of the shorter fur, so we don't have to worry about the individual brush strokes. So I just kind of turned my brush sideways, used the paint that was on the edge of it, and just kind of scummled that in there. But if you need to grab more of your paint and just apply. Oh, let's bring this right up next to the ear, actually. Okay. So um, you don't necessarily need to clean your brush because now we're going to be doing stepping down and doing a mixture of our burnt sienna and raw sienna and going about a one-to-one -one ratio. Go. And then we're going to kind of keep doing the same thing on the ears and then we'll get into little dots as we work on the face. So again, the ears holding that brush um, kind of perpendicular to the canvas and using just the last two millimeters of the brush to apply your paint. And again, every two or three brush strokes, I am grabbing more paint just so I can apply it a bit thicker. And really just kind of trying to fill in the rest of the space, but still keep with practicing that pressure of your brush and making these um, kind of curly organic lines. And again, as you can see, totally okay as I'm overlapping some of the other colors. My paint is still wet, so some of those other colors may be mixing with um, what I'm already applying, but because we're keeping in the kind of the same family of colors, it all uh, works nicely together. And we will be adding some of this color combo to the face, and it will be pretty cool when we get towards the end of the painting, when we get into some of the really light colors, um, and even some of the pure white, just how much it makes it pop uh, for the painting. And that's part of the fun creative process as well, is just discovering and seeing how much it changes um, as we get rid of that white canvas space. All right, so moving in around the eye, the face, these will just be more little dots that kind of overlap compared to the ears that were longer brush strokes. And again, just applying my paint as generous and as thick as I can. And as you guys paint, um, please email me photos of what you paint. I'm get, actually building quite a nice collection in the student folder. Whoops. Sorry, did not mean to kick the tripod. Make sure that stayed lined up. There we go. All right. Those were user-defined tech issues. Sorry about that. Part of this digital interactive online world that we are running full steam towards. <laughs> and I forgot what I was talking about, so hopefully it'll pop back into my head. All right, looks like no questions at the moment. All right, doing good. I forgot to put the black on that gum line. We'll come back and do that. All 
And again, those of you on a stretched canvas, as we're getting down here, remember to carry the uh, pet color around the edge. Oops, more tan. And if anybody want to wants to make this a bit more of a pop art style at the end, if you want to redo the outline of that traceable with black paint, um, I've done that in some of the other videos and demos, but it does give a nice kind of just pop color to it. So feel free to take it in your own direction. All right, so I think, let's see, let's get a little shadow right under here. And then we're gonna move into our next lighter color. All right, and just because I had a lot of buildup on that brush, I'm just gonna clean it out wipe off that excess paint. And now we're gonna be using that uh, raw sienna directly by itself, and then we'll be mixing with a little bit of white as we get a little bit lighter. And as you're painting this at home, if you're realizing that this tan or your tan paint's kind of cool and you prefer a warmer or more yellowish tan, you can add some yellow to each one of these color mixtures. Um, start with a small amount and add more to kind of get to a warmer tan color if that's what you're looking for. You could also switch out and do shades of dark gray if you wanted a, uh, a dog with black fur. And you can do shades of light gray if you wanted a dog with white fur. So feel free to switch this up. And again, this raw sienna is one of my more transparent colors for this brand, so you can see how thin it is applying. So if you need to apply thicker, instead of coming in at that um, perpendicular angle or that 90 degree angle, kind of come in and you, even just noticing how different that looks, how more opaque that section is compared to where it's a little more transparent here. So again, for painting, you're constantly just finding new ways to utilize your tools, um, new things to look at, and basically new things to try. <laughs> All right, so laying this base in here, I might be able to get a second layer in here. Uh, depending on the time, we're just now about 20 minutes in. I try to keep these videos about 30 to 40 minutes. And those of you at home painting, please utilize the pause function. Uh, pause the video, paint a little bit, watch a little bit more, and then uh, move along. So take these videos at your pace. Just because it's a half hour demo or a 40 minute demo, you do not have to keep up with my pace. So pause the video when you need to. And that goes for any of my videos. And things you would like me to paint in the future, uh, leave a comment in the um, comments below or in the chat. I've got a running list. We've got some great suggestions coming through and it's less that I have to think about. So I do appreciate you guys' suggestions. And if we don't get to be able to do a second layer on here, basically a second layer would be recreating in the exact formula that we did. So going back and starting with our dark colors, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. Um, so feel free to do the, go through the video once and then start over again at the beginning and put a second layer on your painting. For the demos that I've been doing, Fridays have been premieres of an edited video, and I'm thoroughly enjoying that because I can actually answer your questions um, with a bit more focus because I'm not painting. Um, and I can do a bit more detailed work in that because it is edited compared to the live demos. And then Saturday and Sunday are our live demos. All right, so we're gonna make a light tan. So pulling some of that white, or uh, tan, uh, raw sienna aside, now we're gonna add some white and probably a two to one ratio, two parts raw sienna to one part white. Again, basically just going down two shades lighter than what you were just using. And I'm gonna apply it right on top of what we were just working on. Um, again, that's gonna help with a bit of the opaqueness so I don't have to do as much of a second coat and then we'll go a little bit lighter next. All right, 
And this one actually looks kind of cool. So if you need to maybe clean off that excess paint, get your brush to a bit more of a pointy tip. And we're going to go back to those longer brush strokes um, on the ears. And now as we're even putting a lighter color on top of a darker color, add a touch of water, a little more fluidity. Um, you can always add a little bit of water to your brush. It makes it a little more fluid, um, but you never want your brush dripping wet with water. And as you're doing any wispies that are going overlapping the background, I do recommend just grabbing paint for each brush stroke so that way you're applying it a bit thicker to um, compensate for the darker color of the background that's underneath. All right, let's give this a little time to dry so I can apply these a little more solid. All right, so let's get this chest a little bit wider and then we're gonna move into that tongue. So we're going even lighter. And I was rather generous with that amount of white and putting it on the edge. So that way I'm only grabbing a little bit of that color. And this raw sienna is still wet that's underneath. So it is mixing a little bit and changing, um, but this dog has a rather light curly chest. So just getting that in there before I switch colors. And we'll also get his eye color in there because right now he's looking a bit like a zombie. All right, so let's work on the tongue. That will give some time for that to dry and it'll be easier to put some of the other layers on top of it. So clean that brush really good. We're gonna go to light pink, rather light pink. So I'm gonna actually add to this blob of white right here. A tiny, tiny, tiny amount of red goes a long way to make your light pink and we are going super light. So I like to just kind of touch my brush to it maybe excess paint right there, and then leaving what's on my brush, start mixing that pile. And again, notice how so little red pigment made this a light pink. And that's actually pretty close to the color I'm looking for. So we're gonna fill in that tongue, the whole tongue, and then we're gonna lay a little bit of a darker pink um, on top of this, because there would be the tongue would be getting darker as it goes back into the mouth, back into a shadow space, or place without light. And again, if your pink is a little bit more pink than mine, totally okay. So adding a bit more red, going a little bit darker, and where the tongue is going back into the mouth. Basically just placing it right on top of that light pink. It is blending a little bit with it. We're gonna go a little bit on the edge at the bottom, almost like a little crescent shape right here. And then we still need to go just a touch darker. So we need a bit of a grayish pink. And again, small amount of pigment goes a long way. Put it on the edge, leaving what's on the brush. Sometimes we gotta grab a little bit more. And then right where that center line was, going right down that. And let's see, I'm gonna go just a touch darker, just because it is diffusing and a little bit darker right on the edge. And if that um, darkness is almost too much of a contrast, wipe that brush off or um, either wipe the brush off or go in with a kind of a cleaner brush, a dry brush, and you can just with light pressure kind of blend the pink and the grayish color together. So kind of just work with it to find your balance. All right, and I'm gonna pick up some black. We're gonna get the gum line in there. We're just gonna use that straight black. And we do have a little bit of a gum line right here. I can't remember if that was on the traceable or not, since I painted over it. So 
So we've got this side gum line, and I'm actually just going to clean up the edge of the nose down here. So with any, any time that you're painting, it is, especially with acrylic paint, it's okay to go back to some of any of these colors. We are going to go back to these little lips um, and reapply that line so it kind of pushes that tongue back in there a little bit more. But it is okay to go back to any of these colors and apply another layer. Or even in a week from now, if you've lived with the painting for a while and you go, oh, I wish this was a little bit more of a highlight, go back and change it. Acrylic paint is a nice medium that you can keep layering with. All right, so we're kind of going back to that first color that we made, um, but hanging out a bit more in the reddish brown, and this is going to be the eye color. And if you do feel like changing the eye color, go right ahead. We will reapply that pupil. And I'm just going to try to get that in there a little bit thicker. And then while we have this color made, we're going to go back and intensify those shadows. So I think we might run this at a 45 minute video. So let's see. So again, that burnt sienna with a little bit of black mixture going back and basically applying our second layer. And it will be kind of nice just to see how much more opaque, how much better it looks getting uh, the second layer on here. And if your paint is still wet like mine is and it's mixing with the other colors, that's okay. That's part of art. That's part of painting quickly. And if you're painting a little slower too, that's okay. If it's already dry, that's part of your style today. going back into those ears with those kind of little wispy lines, a little bit of a curve to it, even if they're a little bit longer. Maybe you're exaggerating these cute little curls. And if you have a particular dog in mind, and maybe they've got longer waves, maybe some of them, the one you're thinking of has, you know, really tight spiral curls, feel free to adjust this to match maybe the dog that you might be thinking about. And then again, as you overlap the background with any of these colors, just make sure it's a little bit thicker. And then going back to this little shadow on the back. Again, carry that color around the side. And now we're going to move in just to that direct burnt sienna. And if you want to, actually I can't believe I haven't even mentioned it before. If you would like to paint a picture of your own pet, um, check out my online school, Paint with Lovejoy. And my signature class on there is Paint Your Pet, and it's geared towards first-time and beginner painters. And you'll be working from your own photograph. We talk about how to transfer that to your canvas, how to edit your uh, photo. And then we go through the value scale. And it's actually really similar to what we did here today, to where we start with our dark shadows and work towards our light colors. And when you paint something that you love, like your pet, uh, you're actually going to learn even more and you're going to put more energy into it. So don't be afraid. You will do your pet more justice than you think. And they always turn out so super, super cute. Like it is still my favorite class to teach. And pet people are just so supportive of each other too. So share it with your pet friends. All right, so just going back over the shadows on the face again, tiny little dots that just overlap each other. All right, and then 
using now the burnt sienna and raw sienna mixture. I'm going to apply this rather generously. And I believe next month, it's at least on the schedule and I hope I can be able to get to it, um, starting filming slight intermediate classes. And with those, I will be using more of the artist grade paint. So I'll be using the Golden and Liquitex. Um, so just kind of a nice uh, difference and think kind of gold a step up to for my beginner painters. And let's see, what else do we have going? Um, oh, the doodles. Um, those were a big request by quite a few of you. And the doodles are released every Monday and Wednesday. And assuming that they're fairly popular, I may get up to doing them every day. Um, but you, I recommend that you do them with a pencil and then go over it with a brush and work on the pressure. It's really good brush practice. All right, so going right into that raw sienna now. These ears are a little bit lighter or drier. I'm gonna clean that brush, get all that excess paint off. Oh, and another thing to try for the ears, again, moving to uh, the medium flat brush. And I like this for making some of the longer swirls because it just holds a little bit more paint. And don't be afraid to, like I said, layer your paint, put it on there a little thicker. Uh, one of the biggest things that I notice for my beginner painters is you try to be rather sparing with the paint um, and it ends up causing some frustration as far as uh, drying too quickly or not getting the opaque coverage that you were going for. So don't be afraid to just apply more paint. some down here and then we'll do one more shade lighter and then we'll go back and define the eyes and yeah still should be about a 45 minute little demo here I have greatly appreciated these demos over the last three months you guys have had me paint many subject matters that I probably wouldn't have chosen to paint on my own and it's been a good challenge for me so no matter where you're at in your career or life or discovery phase there's always new things that you can do to challenge yourself and to learn okay let's see let me go back to the pointy brush we're going to go super light i'm going to grab more of that white make a new pile all right going back to almost that super light raw sienna that we were using earlier let's get some of these last little highlights on here And this is pretty light, it's not quite pure white, but again, it's just kind of cool how much it pops next to some of the darker colors. And this is part of the layers that I was talking about. Don't be afraid to put more layers on here because this is what helps give the fullness of this little fluffy dog. And this is something that you could paint today and keep painting other things and then come back in a year from now and paint it again and you'll be amazed at how much easier it is um, how much better you've gotten so sometimes it is nice to do that and just have that visual documentation of how far your skills evolved
oh, and I see more activity on the chat. I forgot to look earlier. Let me see. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're enjoying the videos and how much you love the channel and the art. So thank you. Appreciate it. Um, it's Boba. Hopefully I said your name correctly. Awesome. And Denise, I'm loving your doodles. Um, and so glad that you're practicing. That's really awesome. Your skills are improving beautifully. All right. So just so thrilled that everybody is just getting excited at trying these new things um, and pushing your own skills and encouraging others. That's actually one of the other really awesome things about the channel. So I really appreciate that you guys are supportive to each other. You say hi. Um, we've developed kind of a nice, cute little following. So. It is truly through what you guys have shared with your community and painting your own paintings um, that has helped this channel grow. I think I started it about two years ago. Um, started it as a response to all the art being cut out of schools. And I wanted to give people just another opportunity to go, hey, it's not that hard and you need to create. So you guys have helped the channel grow. So I'm so grateful. All right, I'm actually going to go back with some raw sienna because some of this is a little lighter than I'd like. Oh, but this is a cute, sweet little puppy. All right, so I'm going to go back with some of that raw sienna. Some of it's still a little wet, so it will blend a little bit with it. And as you get into kind of the final stages of your painting, trust your instincts. If you're inclined to go, oh, I want a little more dark right there, trust that and go ahead and add that dark color or whatever your instincts are encouraging you to do. That is what's really going to push your own art and your own style by listening to your instincts. And sometimes those instincts may um, create something that you really don't like but that is something that you learned a lot from. I have found that most of the paintings that I really hated that were complete disasters, I learned so much from those and I ended up applying it to my next painting that would turn out really awesome. So don't get discouraged um, when sometimes your physical creation does not match what is in your head. You learn to be kind of humble in the art world with that. Okay, so that's looking a little bit better. Let me get a little more here. All right, and then we're going to re-outline the eyes. We're going to put a little highlight on the nose. Oh, let me get those bottom lips too. So I'm going to clean that brush out. We're going to do the lips first right down here. And it was that kind of lighter color, this lighter raw sienna that we were using. A bit more sienna. All right, and I'm just gonna go right over that. And if I did have any of the kind of grayish pink that overlapped those lips, you wanna make sure that you overlap them with this particular color right now. And that just kind of helps set that tongue back into the space of the mouth. And as you guys are painting, I love telling all my students this, you guys are magicians. You are creating the illusion of a 3D object on a flat 2D surface. So you should be very proud of yourselves for this transformation. All right, so in the home stretch, let's go for black. I'm gonna redo that eyeliner and the black pupil. So as you're doing that black pupil, You've got two options. You can try to leave that white dot right there, but what likely happens with a lot of my beginner painters is it's gonna paint over. So I'm gonna do that intentionally on both eyes, and then we're gonna reapply that white dot. And this also helps show how important that little white dot is because now this dog looks like a zombie. And when we put that white dot in um, in a moment, it's amazing how much it kind of brings a spark of life. So 
as we are doing this eyeliner and we are doing top and bottom eyeliner. You can see that I've put my pinky out. You can use that as a steady pivot point. We are going for pretty tiny lines. So if it is too much to do it with the um, pointy brush, use a toothpick or a paper clip and unfold that paper clip. And then just use that straight edge. It's nice that it's kind of rigid and you don't have to um, worry about the bend or the give that the bristles are gonna have. All right, we're gonna make that dark gray one more time. We're gonna clean up the top of that nose. And again, I pulled some of that black aside, add a little bit of white. And again, just cleaning it up. All right, then clean that brush really good. All right, just looking to see if there's any other questions. Cool. All right, clean that brush really good. We're gonna grab some pure white paint and I am putting wet paint onto wet paint. So I do recommend at home, you let your black pupils dry before you do this. Um, if you don't want to, you don't have to. But what we were gonna do is we're gonna hold the brush perpendicular to the canvas. We're gonna come in and touch the brush on the canvas, pull it right back. The important thing is, is that you want this dot going in the exact same spot on both eyeballs. So you do not have a cross-eyed looking dog. Um, if they're not in the same spot. So same spot and you will have a normal looking dog. All right, so again, if you're looking at the pupil, we're gonna go to, uh, what was it, about one o'clock. You can always reference that traceable. Same spot on both eyes. And again, just notice basically the power of high contrast, that pure white next to that pure black, and it immediately draws our eye to that. Um, so you'll hear me talk about I like high contrast and the power of high contrast in other videos, and that's kind of a nice way to demonstrate it. All right, so little catch light right there on the nose and the eyes, and I'm actually gonna um, make a light gray, and I'll show you an option if you want to put nostrils on. Do not have to, if they look weird, you can always just paint it black again. Let's see, let's go a little bit darker. All right, so right here, if you want nostrils, you kind of just want the bottom. If you um, put the whole nostril on there, then it's going to look like a pig. And if you end up doing that and you go, nah, I don't really like it, just go back with black, paint over it. Nobody knows the difference. So just trying to give you guys some options. And as I'm looking at this on the screen, I'm kind of bothered by this area. So let's go back, we'll add a bit of our dark color. And as you get into these final stages, um, I want you to look at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away. Look at it from that distance. Does anything need to change? Do you need to go darker? Do you have too much light space somewhere? When you look at it from that distance, that is the normal viewing distance for most things in life and especially artwork. So if you can start getting in that habit and looking at your artwork from the vantage point that most other people are going to be looking at it, um, it will just help your creative growth. All right. So thanks so much for joining me today, this weekend. I appreciate it. Um, the schedule is already up for the next couple of weeks, as well as the traceables. Um, leave your suggestions of what you want me to paint. Like I said, I've got a nice list going. And I will, I know uh, George O'Keefe was a huge suggestion yesterday. I have many of those. I've got some more Van Gogh and Klimt paintings that will be released. Um, and if you can figure out how to duplicate people so I could have one person edit, one version of myself edit, and another version paint, um, that would be very helpful. <laughs> um, but I really enjoy uh, doing these. So thank you guys so much for hanging out this morning. Um, send me pictures of what you paint. Have a fabulous Sunday and good week. And I will catch everybody next week. So, cheers. <laughs>